half of 2018 is gone. What have you realized this year so far, either in your personal life or music career? What have I realized? Yeah. <sighs> I would say as a, as a producer, musician, and an artist that I, I realized that, you know, I've got bigger than I've ever been in my whole career. Like 2018 was a big eye opener for me. Uh, it's not even over yet, but I have done some of the biggest things I've ever done in my whole career, and, you know, and I started back and had my first big song in 2004. So, you know, uh, it's just confirmation to me. Uh, 2018 has definitely been confirmation that I am doing the right thing and I'm in the right place. What are some of those accomplishments? Uh, we can start off by I, I signed my first major uh, record deal with Capital Motown. So I had my first project come out, Trap Holiday. You know, first my debut album on a major label. That's big for me. So uh, within 30 days, I released three major albums. I released Trap Holiday, Let the Trap Say Amen, and Beast Mode 2. All these are, you know, major album placements, which I've done every track on each one. And what was so amazing to me about these projects is that, let's say, Make the Trap Say A was number one. It came my debut number one on the uh, gospel charts. Now, the reason that's so big for me is because I'm a church musician. You know, I've been doing church music all my life before I even started doing rap, before I was even able to listen to rap. So to come out, you know, because I always was trying to find, like, how I'm going to get in the gospel, you know, arena. How I'm going to get, you know, in it. And, uh, and it was just amazing, man. I, I, I met Lecrae. I mean, w within a month's time, we came out with an album, and the album was just so big. I remember him screenshotting the charts, and it was like, it was Beyonce and Jay-Z, and it was Zay and Lecrae. And I was like, oh, snap. I'm seeing me and him on billboards in New York, Times Square. So, you know, that was big for me. I never had that before. All the time I've been doing music, I never had that before. And then to say maybe two weeks after that to drop Beast Mode 2, you know, just like the most anticipated album I think the streets ever been been waiting for. Uh, to drop that and then to see, you know, not even a week after it dropped, like Beast Mode uh, is the highest, uh, Album rank album on Billboard was on you know we we came in number three uh, on Billboard and it's a stream only album you can't even buy the album so the streams is it broke you know streaming records as a a stream only album that's on Billboard so all those accomplishments I never had before so not that I'm just on an album that did that I produced the whole album or Zaytoven is the art you know is part of as an artist on these albums so those are like real 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 big you know, accomplishments for me. When it came to Beast Mode 2, and we'll talk about the other projects in a second. Mm -hmm. When it came to, excuse me, Beast Mode 2, obviously this was a surprise release to yep. the public. Mm -hmm. How far in advance did you know? I mean, this has been heavily anticipated for a long time. Yeah, yeah. We've heard about it. Maybe it'll come out. Maybe it, it won't. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know if it was fake artwork out there before or not. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, how far in advance did you know this was going to be released before the public knew about it? I knew maybe two weeks before it got released. Now, me and Future have been doing music ever since, you know, Beast Mode 1. We've always been, you know, doing music. And we thought, I think maybe in 2016, that it was going to be the time for Beast Mode 2 to come out. But it wasn't. You know how the how the climate change and music and certain things change. So, you know, we, I didn't know. I don't think he, he even knew. We didn't really plan on it. It's just, you know, it, it had to be a feeling. It had to be a time where it's like, it felt like Beast Mode needed to come out. And that's what happened. I think after I dropped the Trap, Trap Holiday album, uh, it's a song on there called Mo Rilla that uh, I did with Future on the album and it just, as soon as it hit, it just touched the streets. That's all you heard was Mo Rilla. And you hear cars riding, you get stop at the gas station, that's all you hear is Mo Rilla. So I think that was just like, you know, the spark to say, you know what? It's time for that sound. The streets want and need that sound right there. So, and you know, me and Future was locked and loaded. Even though we was locked and loaded, we still went back in the bag, went back in the studio, you know, making sure we gave the streets what they needed. 
Were these records recorded uh, back in 2016? Or were these beats given to him back in 2016 when you mentioned? It was a few of them. Like, you know, the way we work, it's like, you know, we did a lot of new songs, but then, you know, when you putting a project together, especially with, a, with one producer and one artist, you gotta find songs that match, you know, that mesh together, that sounds like a project. And we got, you know, uh, you know, a whole lot of songs that's super hard, but maybe they didn't fit the mold or the sound of this project. So yeah, I reached back, you know, I reached back to 2016, grab a song, maybe one in 17, you know, just to make sure it just felt, in, you know, felt complete. Yeah. What's personally your favorite record on that project? I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't even have a favorite. It's like that's all I've been listening to since it came out. So, uh, it's it's so short and sweet, and it it's just like a powerful. It just got a you know it's a mold to it. So it's like I just put it in and let it ride. I might ride around the city, and the the CD didn't play three four times, you know. So I all of them, man. They all of them got a special something, you know, to them for me. So I don't have a, a favorite. Okay, um, on that project too. Uh, Obviously, these are your beats. Uh, are you giving direction on the project as far as what songs make it or what songs should stay on, off, that sort of thing? Are you definitely okay? Uh, just like in Beast Mode, uh, Beast Mode One, like Beast Mode Two, Future's like, man, I'm finna, I'm finna record all the songs that you're gonna need. You know, it's gonna be up to you what you feel like. Do you think this need to go? Do that don't need to stay on the project? What? And it was just me just sitting and listening and like, okay, this feel like beast mode. This feel like, you know, and just and saying, okay, what song can come after that? So, you know, for those two weeks, that's all I was doing, just listening over and over again, like, okay, this need to go, this need to go. So yeah, it was up to me. He, he you know, he let me make that call. Mm. Uh, any remorse on those records that were chosen? Was there like a record, for example, you wish, you know what, we should have threw that on there or maybe taken a record off? Or no, the only remorse with with projects like that is you wish you could put more songs on there. Which I, could, you know, we could have put more songs and there's so many songs that I'm like, oh, this should go, this should go. But if, you know, if that was the case, it'd be, you know, 50 songs on there. So I just had to, you know, just trust my heart and say, okay, these are the nine I wanna put out right now that, that fits well together, so. Now with the Lecrae project, uh, you, you guys just happened to meet and talk about doing a project, is that how, how simple this started? I don't, I forgot who who it was, it was like, man, you need to meet Lecrae. And I was, I remember hearing his name, you know, all the time. I know he was like the hottest, you know, uh, gospel, art, you know, rap artist that's in the game. But I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. And me, a lot of times meeting new people, you know, I, it's, I be kind of funny because I be feel like they gonna be funny, they don't really, they maybe they not really into my music or whatever, so. I remember going to meet him and it was just a, you know, first time we met, playing on some beats, he's like, ooh, this, I like this and that. And I think he was working on, you know, trying to work on some other project. After two days of being in the studio with him, we both was like, man, we gotta just do a whole project together. You know what I mean? I mean, not just cause of the sound, but just, just our beliefs and what we believe in. It's just like it made all the sense in the world. I felt like, you know, God put us together to like, okay, y'all need to put a project together. Zay, you know, your demographics is, is real street and hood, you know, so the sound that you gonna bring is gonna give him a platform to reach, you know, people that he probably haven't reached before and vice versa, you know what I mean? His audience is, now they know, you know, his audience probably didn't know who Zay Tobin was. I really didn't listen to my music like that. But now, you know, I think uh, they know me now, you know what I mean, and vice versa, so it was just a, I think a, uh, a special, special project. Is there a personal favorite uh, track you have on there? <sighs> you know, man, I'm real biased with my own music because that's really all I listen to most of the time. So I really like everything. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with by chance. Um, that's the last song on the album. And the reason I go with that is because my mama, you know, it's one thing to get your parents to listen to the rap music. You know, my folks listen to gospel music all the time. She be like, put that uh, Lecrae in, play the By Chance song. So it's like, I'm gonna go with that one because she just made me you know, play that over and over again. So. Mm. I see. Mm. And uh, I imagine you were really hands-on with that project as definitely, well. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Any remorse on that one? No remorse. That's like That's been like the biggest blessing and shocker that I had this year. Because it wasn't in my plan 
to work with Lecrae. I didn't even know him. I never met him before. So to come out with a project in less than, you know, 60 days and then it do so well, it's like, you know, you, you couldn't ask for nothing more than that. Now, the Trap Holiday project. Mm -hmm. uh, you did mention in the beginning of the segment you got your first big song in 2004. Mm -hmm. It's 2018 and you put out your first major oh. label project mm -hmm. out under your own name. Mm -hmm. What took so long? Uh, I think, well, I've been putting out projects. I've been putting out Zaytoven projects for a long time now, but never been on a major label. And I think, I think what really the reason why it's happening right now is it's a season for it. Like the producers of the game are just hot now. You know, the producer name mean as much as the rapper's name right now. So I feel like the labels were saying, you know what? Let's sign this producer. Let's sign this producer. You know, let's do these producer projects. And, you know, just timing for it. So, of course, they reached out to me. You know, a couple other producers, you know, had got signed. So the, the label was reaching out to me. I'm like, yeah, come on. I can't wait to do it because this is like another, a brand new, you know, Zayto. And I feel like, I always feel like things like this can be a rebirth, you know, which can stretch my career that much farther and longer. So that's the only, you know, that's the only reason. It ain't, I never got the offer before mm. <laughs> to sign to a major, so. The reason why I ask what took so long is because we've seen the success of albums or singles from uh, compilation albums under like a DJ Khaled Cal, uh -huh. or a DJ Drama, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, so just curious why maybe you never got an offer to put a compilation style album out on a major maybe three years, years ago, ago, five years ago, yeah. seven years ago when those the Khaled albums were really consistently coming out. I believe like the era when Khaled and Drama and all them were coming out, it was a DJ era. It wasn't a producer era. It wasn't like Label was picking up producers to put out, you know, producer out, compilation albums. It was DJs. So now it's let's pick up the producers. You know what I mean? Let's pick up the producers. Let's do albums with them. So that's pretty much what it was. I, I think, see. Yeah, that's all it was. 